What's a good word, y'all? It's your boy DKB here. So taking a look at the upcoming trade deadline, a lot of people wanted the New York Jets to be buyers. I wasn't the highest on this list, but I do know we have some needs, potentially a wide receiver at offensive line that we'd like to try to address. And uh, I finally found an offensive line prospect that I really, really like what I've seen. And uh, there's a bit of a history between the coaching staffs, uh, as well as the fact that this is a player that's kind of been overperforming expectations on a bad team right now. So Let's chat about my trade target in offensive lineman, Daniel Brunskill, uh, 6'5", 300 pounds. He's currently with the Tennessee Titans, but this is a guy that was formerly started his career with the Atlanta Falcons undrafted, uh, but ended up really making a name for himself with the 49ers, and he ended up following general, general manager Rand Carthen to the Titans uh, as one of his first signings. You know, taking a look at this offseason, he was definitely a priority free agent signing for this team, regardless of the connection uh, between Rand Carthen and uh, Daniel Brunskill here. So what is it that's really intriguing about him? You know, we're missing the impact of an Elijah Vera Tucker type player. Uh, and, you know, I've said this before, we overdo the versatility aspect sometimes. Just because you play multiple positions doesn't mean you've done it at a high level. You could take a look at our very own, uh, uh, you know, tackle and Billy Turner as proof of that, right? He can play guard, he can play tackle in both spots, uh, but he doesn't really look great by any means, right? But with Daniel Brunskill, he's kind of in that, uh, he's a solid player, right? He's not spectacular, he's not flashy above average. Um, he'll have a couple games that really wow you. But overall, this is a very disciplined, solid guy that you know what you're getting from. And the best part is, not only can you see it on film, but you've heard multiple people that have uh, watched the Titans, they watched the 49ers, um, they'll tell you that there's not really a fall off in talent as he goes from position to position. You know, a lot of his experiences are coming as a right guard. You take a look at him playing, uh, you know, over the last four to five years. But realistically, in his career, 46 games starter, 65 games overall, a lot of that coming as a right guard. Uh, especially where he's playing right now with the Titans, but also with the 49ers prior to him shifting him around a little bit. Um, and you get really, really excited about that. This is a guy that maybe you can plug in uh, to replace what we're missing with Joe Tittman. It's a guy that can go out there and give Max Mitchell a run for his money as a right tackle if we want it. Or if we run into any issues with Connor McGovern and we're not liking what he's showing, um, you can place him in at center and you can feel comfortable about the production and what you're getting from a guy like him. And again, He's playing with the Titans on a bad team, right? Two and four record uh, right now, I believe. Um, you're talking about them potentially having a fire sale. There's rumors about Derrick Henry being traded. Um, this is going to be one of those under the radar guys, especially because he's a recent signing for the Titans, um, even though it's on a one year deal. And that's one of the next best pieces about this guy. He's going to be extremely cheap, right? He signed a two year, $5.5 million contract, 1.5 of that uh, guaranteed. Um, but you're talking about getting a potentially low-end starter uh, for the value of an undrafted free agent, right? It's 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 kind of the same trick uh, that Joe Douglas was able to pull when he got Connor McGovern to come back on. Uh, you know, we can essentially call it the uh, the veterans minimum. Um, you know, crazy crazy contract that we got him signed to. This would be another one in that mold that could look really really good by the end of the year for us. So, um, you know. Taking a look at the Titans, I peeped around at some of the, the comments about Brian uh, and what he's been able to contribute to that team in the, you know, this, this short six-game sample size for them. And he was recently labeled as one of the five uh, you know, members of the Tennessee Titans uh, players that have overperformed expectations, which is great to hear. So, you know, again, he's not going to wow you. You take a look at the stats so far. Um, he's allowed 14 pressures, two sacks. He has a 64.1 pass block rate. 62.5 run block rate uh but to put it in perspective for you guys um i haven't accounted for this recent game uh but he was the sixth highest run he had excuse me the sixth highest run block win break uh among interior linemen through the first five weeks of the season winning 78 percent of the time so uh he's also bringing in a strong emphasis in the run game for us we know what the tennessee titans are all about when it comes to trying to move the ball so uh, this is a guy, again, I, I can't under or overstate, I guess, enough 
um, how excited I would be, right? I gave you guys again uh, as a tackle, Joe Haig, a guy we wouldn't need to trade for, I believe. He is, I want to say he was a free agent. Either way, this is another one of those huge value trade options for us. It should take very minimal resources to get him traded. I don't think a straight-up player-for-player trade will make sense here, right, if you want to talk about Carl Lawson or Dalvin Cook being up there. Uh, but I wouldn't be mad at it if it necessarily happens, if maybe there's some additional draft picks that are kicked in. But let me know what you guys think uh, about this particular trade target, um, and I'll catch you guys again. Peace.